Okay, I'm going to start this presentation. The name of the presentation is Poor Posture, the Key to Neck Pain and Migraines. This is the second of the webinars that I am providing every two weeks to help people get a better understanding of the cause of their pain and to truly get a legitimate cause, not, not just any diagnosis, not a diagnosis arbitrarily given from a MRI finding, but to understand the symptoms that you're experiencing and what tissue is in distress eliciting those very symptoms. Without getting that proper diagnosis, there is simply no way that you are going to be able to resolve your symptoms because the symptoms themselves are coming from the tissue in distress that is creating those symptoms. There is a direct connection between the tissue in distress, the cause, and the symptoms being experienced. So uh, it's already been shown that diagnostic testing simply finds structural variations that are simply independently existing from the tissue in distress creating the symptoms. There seems to be no indication of causation because the symptoms people experience, such as the ones we'll describe here, would not be the symptoms you would expect if one of those structural variations, herniated discs, arthritis, stenosis, uh, meniscal tear, all these things that are being found on MRIs, the symptoms people are experiencing are not the symptoms you would expect if these structures did elicit symptoms. The symptoms people are experiencing are the ones that you would expect when muscular causes are creating the symptoms. And that's what we're going to discuss in the area of the neck uh, in this particular webinar, just to give some brief information. Again, I am Dr. Mitchell Yass. I've been diagnosing and treating pain for over 28 years. Through my understanding and the development of my understanding, which came after my medical training for physical therapy, that's why the Yass method stands outside of the medical system, because the creation of this system occurred after my medical training, after the recognition that it did not prepare me properly to be able to diagnose and treat people pain. In fact, I have a doctorate in physical therapy and physical therapy, even by the own admission of the American Physical Therapy Association, is perceived by them to be a palliative care, meaning that it is designed to do nothing more than mask symptoms. That's what palliative care means. Uh, and massage therapy, acupuncture, physical therapy, these are all there by the own admission of the American Physical Therapy Association to do nothing more than mass symptoms. I didn't want to take that approach. I wanted to be able to understand what tissue was in distress, eliciting people's symptoms, and that's why I developed this method of correlating symptoms to causes. So um, my, if, you, if you listen to this, and you say to yourself, wow, this really sounds like it relates to me and it can help me and you want to ask some personal questions about your situation, you can certainly contact me by email at drmitch at mitchellyas.com right here. If you want to go to my website, let's say that you're saying, wow, this really is sounding like it's something that would benefit me. And it's important to know that the YAS method is highly effective at being provided, not just in person, but virtually through Zoom sessions. I've been doing this for years, actually at the time when Skype existed before there was even Zoom. So I've been doing this for years. So I'm not just getting on the bandwagon with this telehealth concept. I've been doing this for years because people globally have recognized that physiotherapy as it's called outside the United States has not been beneficial. These national healthcare systems are really designed to push the person as long as they can in limiting treatment until the person finally gives up, which is usually what happens with most people. So in finding out about the YAS method and seeing it as a viable means of diagnosing outside of the normal means of using diagnostic testing, people have been contacting me. So I've been doing Zoom sessions for years now. Now, if you think that that's something you would like to follow up on, you can go to my website again right here, livewithoutpains.com, and you'll see a button that says schedule Zoom session. You could click there 
and there'll be a scheduler which allows you to pick a day and a time that's right for you and you'll be scheduled and we could move forward in helping you resolve your pain. In this particular case, again, we're talking about neck pain and migraines also associated with that punching or hump that people see. If you want to learn more about my method, you could go to my Facebook page, which is the Yas Method. If you want to see a great information, which is again free and there's plenty of it, in a video form, you can go to my YouTube channel at Dr. Mitchell Yas. And finally, my Instagram channel is live underscore without live underscore without pains. OK, so that's how you can get in touch with me. Now, let's go forward and go through this uh, webinar and help you to understand the cause of your neck pain, migraines and humping. At the neck. OK, so poor posture at the neck. What does that represent? So what everybody is seeing is this right here. They're seeing that excessive kyphosis, that horrible hump. The head being uh, forward puts stress on the cervical region, on the cervical spine, leading the lower cervical spine to go from concave to convex. So I want you to look here. So you can see that the cervical spine all the way down to its lower level right here, there are seven cervical vertebrae. And then it's not till the first thoracic vertebrae that you see it start reversing the curve and becoming convex. This is the normal spine. Now let's look over here. Look how compressed and how extreme the lordosis gets in a person in a case where they have this excessive kyphosis. What you see happening is that the upper cervical region actually becomes hyperlordotic. Look how extreme that curve is compared to here. But the lower cervical spine actually is no longer curving in. It's actually curving out here. So what has happened is that the cervical spine shrinks. The size of the cervical spine in this kyphotic, this excessively kyphotic circumstance actually shrinks from the equivalent of seven vertebrae to now only three or four. It's become excessively arched in the upper cervical region and the lower cervical region no longer is even arched. It's actually hunched. So, we see that the cervical spine shrinks, limiting range of motion. Now, because of this fact that you don't have the full ability of the cervical spine to take cervical range of motion of the neck, if this person here, if this person were to move their head back, they would have all seven vertebrae allowed to translate that motion. But because this person only has like three or four vertebrae, the muscles are shortened and just in trying to move the head back, this person's muscles are probably gonna strain and that's gonna to lead to neck pain. So this is why you see this major loss of range of motion and pain with any level of neck motion, right? So what are we saying? You have a shortened, more extreme cervical curve. You can see this is very subtle. Look here, look right here. Look at this, look how extreme that is. Okay, so that's what happens when we have this excessive kyphosis. It's not just affecting the thoracic spine, it's actually affecting the cervical spine. We're going to continue and look at other aspects of the change in this posture. And what we'll see is that if you were to look at this guy's ear here, you would see it's kind of over the center line of his shoulder. What do you see here? Look how far forward this is in relationship to his shoulder. That is what is known as forward head posture. The forward shoulder posture is where the shoulder is moving forward. And since the shoulder really is the connection of the arm bone into the end of the shoulder blade, when you're seeing the shoulder forward move forward, what you're also seeing is this line, the inside line of the shoulder blade moving out. The distance between the spine 
and the shoulder blade, the medial border of the shoulder blade, this increases dramatically. So what happens is that the pecs, as this was before, the pecs, the chest muscles shorten, but these muscles right here, the rhomboids and mid traps, these muscles become overstretched because the distance between the spine and the inner border of the shoulder blade increases. That's what's happening when you're seeing forward shoulder posture. The muscles that support the head, the upper traps and the levator scapula, this is the upper traps, this is the levator scapula, so here and here. Remember, they're attaching to the upper cervical region and the spine, but they also are attaching down to the shoulder blade. So if the shoulder blade moves out away from the spine, the distance that these muscles have to travel increases greatly. The length of the muscles increase and they lose their ability to support the head. That's partly why you're noticing that head is going farther and farther forward because the muscles that are supposed to be holding it up and keeping it back have become overstretched, lengthened and lost their ability to support the head. That's what we're talking about when we're looking at poor posture of the neck. What causes poor posture and headaches at the neck? It's a combination of a muscle imbalance between the pecs here, the anterior delt and the bicep versus the rhomboids and mid traps, the posterior delt and the triceps. So when you look at this, you're supposed to be seeing two groups of opposing muscles, which have roughly the equivalent level of strength. Well, what's happened is due to the fact that people do a lot of things in the front of them, or they're looking down at their phone or their tablets, they're creating a load and it's being picked up by the anterior delt, the chest and the bicep. And what's happening is an imbalance is occurring where these muscles become more strong than the rhomboids, mid traps, the post delts and the triceps. So this imbalance is what's causing the chest to shorten and doing so because it's attached to the shoulder. It's what's pulling the shoulder forward. So this imbalance is what's leading to the poor posture. Now, the headache aspect of it comes from the fact that the upper traps, this part right here, if you notice, this actually runs all the way up and attaches to what is known as the greater uh, occipital protuberance, which is at the back of the skull. You can kind of see it right here. This is the upper trap. It's attaching into the skull. So if, and, and when you say the skull, it's actually not the bone, but the periosteum. It's the periosteum, which is the connective tissue that runs around all bones. So in this case, the skull has periosteum that surrounds it. So if this muscle, this upper trap muscle here was to pull excessively here on that periosteum, it can pull and create pain reception anywhere along the periosteum, which runs along the entire skull. So what you're seeing is a headache created by muscle tension. It's muscle tension. It's excessive pulling of the upper trap on the periosteum, creating the headache. So that headache, just like neck pain, can be associated, and in fact, in most cases, the vast majority of cases, is associated with this idea of having this poor posture, this kyphosis, this excessive shortening of the neck, the head going forward, it's all due to this muscle imbalance as part of the reason. I want it to be made very, very clear. This is not arbitrary. This is not something because that happens when you age. This crap that it's hereditary. There's nothing hereditary about this. The only reason people think it's hereditary is because multiple generations have had this, but the only reason multiple generations have this is because this idea of this natural imbalance occurring is quite common. And certainly as people get older and they do less, the imbalance is heightened by the fact that you're using less and less muscles. So aging is certainly a reason why you see this more, but you can start seeing this in people younger and younger 
And that's associated with the overuse of phones and tablets and things like that during that head forward. So it's certainly not arbitrary and it's not hereditary. And for anyone to tell you that they're going to fix this by manipulating the bones, that's certainly insane. Because the fact is that the position of bones is based on the pulls of muscles. Your vertebrae didn't say one day, I feel like getting up and moving around and trying a new place, right? It was, it ended up here because of a muscle imbalance, the muscle in the front of the shoulder and chest that attach up to the, up to the vertebrae pulled it forward, right? We've acknowledged that. I presented that to you. And this imbalance where these aren't strong enough are preventing it from being pulled back. So for anyone to say that they're going to manipulate your spine and somehow prevent this from reoccurring is complete fallacy. It's idiocy. It's illogical. There's nothing that you can see in the physical presentation of the situation that would indicate that. Once you recognize that your bones are misaligned, it can only be assumed that it's misaligned because of the fact that you have weakness or imbalance of muscles attached to the vertebrae in this particular case, right? And the most important thing to understand is you sure as shit don't have to live like this. That's the most important point I can make to you, especially if you're older. Stop thinking that this is related to aging. It's not. It can be easily remedied, easily remedied. How to resolve neck pain and hunching. You must recognize that the muscles that exist all the way up from the skull to the lower portion of the thoracic spine to the bottom of the rib cage are all associated with shoulder function. I want you to look at this carefully. Look up here. Can you see that this muscle is running from the upper cervical region, even the skull, and then runs and attaches to the shoulder blade? The same thing can be said for the levator scapula. Look all the way down here. Here's the lower thoracic region. Right here is the bottom of your rib cage. Look at this muscle. Look at this muscle. This is the lower trapezius muscle. Runs all the way up to the shoulder blade. Right? Even the pecs, even these muscles, uh, the lats, even the lats attached to the front of the shoulder joint. So what you need to understand is, look from here, the skull, all the way down to the lower thoracic spine at the level of the rib cage. All of the muscle attached in this vertebral area attaches to the shoulder blade and is related to shoulder function. So if you are having pain all the way from the skull, including headaches, all the way down to the lower thoracic region in line with the rib cage, you must understand near the spine, you must understand that this is associated with shoulder dysfunction. This has nothing to do with the spine. I don't care if anyone tells you they can fix this by adjusting your spine, doing surgery at your spine, giving you cortisone injections at your spine. These areas from here to here, look at it, look at it. I'm proving it to you. The muscles that attach to the cervical spine, to the lower thoracic spine, these muscles all go back to the shoulder. It is associated with shoulder dysfunction. You must recognize that. The only way you're going to resolve headaches, neck pain, mid-back pain, lower back pain is by recognizing you're going to have to do shoulder related exercises. Okay. Pain in the neck region in almost all cases, pain up here, pain in that neck region, almost all cases, not associated with spinal dysfunction, but shoulder dysfunction. The faster you get to that recognition, the faster you're going to be able to resolve your pain. Okay. This is critical to understand. This is a muscular cause. I don't care what the MRI tells you. I don't care if it said you have a thousand herniated discs, a thousand levels of stenosis. There is no reason to think that that MRI finding is correct, especially when as many people without pain have the same findings as those with pain. When as many people who have had surgery, the failure rate for surgery in the terms of back surgery is somewhere around 70, 80%. The medical system created the diagnosis failed back surgery syndrome. 
What do you think that diagnosis means? Failed back surgery syndrome. It means you had a surgery which was designed to resolve a symptom and you have the exact same symptom, if not more intense after the surgery as before. So they're giving you a new diagnosis. You're no longer diagnosed with stenosis or pinched nerve. Now you're being told that your diagnosis is you had a failed surgery. And what does the idea of syndrome mean? It means that the etiology, the cause of the symptom is unknown. So they're telling you your new diagnosis is you had a surgery and the fact that you're still having the symptom is unknown as to its cause. Does that sound like that's the pathway that you want to continue to stay on or even consider? This makes more sense. Look at the picture. Look at the vertebrae. Look what attaches. It's all related to shoulder dysfunction. So get how to resolve this fully, correcting the imbalance between the pecs, the anterior delts, and biceps versus the rhomboids, mid traps post delts, and triceps, and strengthening the lower traps, corrects the posture and the pain, and if you're having headaches. So what we're saying here is that we're going to strengthen the post delt, the mid traps and rhomboids, the triceps. And even in red here, the lower trap, look at that lower trap. Look at this section here. What you'll notice is it's got vertical fibers and it's lower than the shoulder blade. So if it would have become stronger, the tone of that is actually gonna pull the shoulder blade down the back. And in doing that, that's what's gonna draw the head back. Remember, if your head is attached from here to here, from to the shoulder blade and the shoulder blade gets pulled back, then these muscles act as ropes and pull the head back. That's how you get rid of the kyphosis. That's how you get rid of the forward head and the shortened cervical spine. You need to strengthen all these muscles here, the post delts, the triceps, the mid traps and rhomboids and the lower trap. Just remember to understand that altered posture is not a cause, but a symptom just like the pain of a muscle weakness or imbalance. Don't let anyone tell you forward head posture or excessive kyphosis is the cause. It doesn't create pain. Misalignment of bones doesn't create pain. If we're talking about bones, what is the only thing that can create pain in a bone? Fracturing. Fracturing would cause bones to create pain. Just because they're misaligned, how does that elicit pain? How does that cause the, what is the mechanism by which the bone begins to elicit pain? Because it's misaligned. Maybe it feels bad about the fact it moved its position. Are you crazy? That's insanity. The only thing that's going to make bone cause pain is fracturing. I don't see any indication of anyone looking for fracturing when someone has forward head and shoulder posture and kyphosis. There's no fracturing. Therefore, there's no reason to think the bones themselves are eliciting your pain. It is the muscles that attack to the bones that are eliciting the pain itself. And even with the headache concept, it is the excessive pull of the upper trap on the periosteum to the skull that's creating the headache. Correct the postural deficit, which also corrects the pain because those two are symptoms of muscle weakness or imbalance. Okay, so that in a nutshell is an explanation of why poor posture is the key to resolving neck pain and migraine headaches. Now, I just gave you the full understanding of why you're having forward head posture in that shortened cervical spine, why you have that hunching in the upper thoracic region, why you can have your pain there, why you can have your headaches. So the question then becomes, well, how do we fix this? We talked about the idea that it's understanding how to strengthen the appropriate muscles, the mid trap rhomboids, the posterior delts, the triceps, even some rotator cuff, and the lower trap. Well, if you think that you're going to go to someone in the medical system who's capable of understanding how to isolate these muscles and provide progressive resistance, you're out of your mind. It's not going to happen. I don't care what you're talking about, whether you're talking about physical therapy, whether you're talking about even going to a personal trainer, 
the understanding of isolation of strengthening and how to apply the appropriate progressive resistance for muscles to adapt is part of the understanding I developed through this process of creating this method. It is unique to the YAS method. I have employed every aspect of science, whether it's physics, biomechanics, there's something called kinetics and uh, kinematics. Um, so there's how muscles create force, there's how muscles move joints, the bones that make up joints. All of this is a fact of plus I've been lifting weights for 35 years and put 60 pounds of muscle on. I am a product of what I have come to learn. And then I ended up being in a profession where the use of that exercise is the means by which I resolve people pain because I've shown that in more than 98% of the cases, the cause is muscular. So if you watch this and this makes sense to you, trust me, you're not going to get the resolution anywhere else. You're going to need to get a YAS method session. Now you can get that in person if you happen to live in Jacksonville, Florida. But if not, anywhere else in the world, get a YAS method Zoom session. The way you can get that session is by going to right here, www.livewithoutpains.com, right? And you'll see it's going to say, schedule a session, and you'll be able to then go to that page, the sessions page, and it will have a calendar where you can schedule a time and a day that's comfortable for you. You're gonna do this in the comfort of your own home. You're gonna have a resistance band in a chair for the session. I'm going to evaluate you, confirming you have a muscular deficit. I'm going to do some exercises. I'm going to demonstrate them. And you're going to perform them under my supervision. The sessions of videotape. You don't get videotape when you go to your physical therapy session or your personal training session, but you will hear because it's critical that you understand exactly how to do these exercises. And if you do them correctly with me and we videotape that, that's what you're going to be following going forward to make sure you're doing this correctly. Then we do recommend four week follow up visits to make sure everything's going correctly, to make sure you're doing the techniques optimally and that you're using the maximum amount of resistance so you can resolve your situation in the shortest period of time. If you have questions, maybe you're not sure about your situation, maybe you'd like further information to make sure that the OS method is right for you. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of misinformation from the medical system. So by all means, you can uh, contact me by email, which is right here, Dr. Mitch at MitchellYoss.com. I'd be happy to speak to anybody. Uh, after doing this for over 28 years and being completely on the outside of the system, I want people to know that this is personal. I believe that I have been given this unique understanding. And I think that everybody who is looking to get out of pain and seeks the YAS method is entitled to have that information and the ability to be pain-free and fully functional. Nobody should think that they have to stay like that forever. That is nonsense. The fact that the medical system has tried to equate chronic pain with chronic illness is lunacy, lunacy. There's only one reason that chronic pain exists, misdiagnosis, you're treating the wrong tissue. The tissue in distress continues to be in distress, which happens to be muscle in more than 98% of the cases. You continue to use your muscles. Therefore, they continue to strain and elicit pain. You're going to have to get this and recognize this as the truth. So if you want to get in touch with me, again, it's Dr. Mitch at MitchellYoss.com. Okay. So for now, I think that will end this webinar. Anybody who wants to get this sent to them, you can email me. Again, at drmitchellyoss.com, and I'll be happy to send you a copy of this. In the meantime, I will be putting this up live on my YouTube channel, uh, Dr. Mitchell Yoss, right here, and you'll be able to see it there. All right, so for now, this is Dr. Mitchell Yoss wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye for now.